It was a quiet suburb in Texas where life moved at a steady, predictable pace. The kind of place where everyone knew everyone else, and secrets were hard to keep. Our home sat at the end of a cul-de-sac, a two-story house with a neat lawn and a white picket fence. It was the quintessential picture of stability and happiness. I was a dedicated husband, married to Lisa for nearly two decades. We had two children, Emily and Jake, who were now grown and living their own lives. I worked as a construction manager, a job that often took me away from home. Lisa, on the other hand, had taken up a position as an administrative assistant at a local law firm. Our life was comfortable, and from the outside, it appeared that we had everything anyone could ask for. A nice house, two cars, and a stable marriage. But as I was about to discover, appearances can be deceiving. It was during one of my trips to oversee a project out of town that the first seeds of doubt were planted in my mind. Little did I know that my life was about to be turned upside down and the idyllic facade of our suburban life would be shattered by betrayal and lies. It started with subtle changes in Lisa's behavior. She had always been a social butterfly, but lately her outings seemed more frequent and her explanations more vague. She'd leave the house with a hurried, I'm meeting friends, or work is crazy right now, don't wait up, and be gone for hours. Her phone, once casually left on the kitchen counter, was now glued to her hand or tucked away out of sight. One evening, while I was still away on a work trip, I called her at our usual time. Instead of the warm, engaging conversation we used to have, she seemed distracted, her responses curt and disinterested. When I asked if everything was all right, she brushed off my concerns, claiming she was just tired from work. I tried to dismiss the gnawing feeling in my gut, attributing her behavior to the stresses of daily life. But as the days turned into weeks, the distance between us grew more pronounced. Lisa, once so eager to share every detail of her day, now offered only the bare minimum. Our phone calls were reduced to perfunctory exchanges, devoid of any real connection. The next clue came when I returned home unexpectedly early from one of my trips. Lisa wasn't at home, which wasn't unusual in itself, but when I asked where she was, she hesitated before saying she was out with a friend. Something about the way she said it didn't sit right with me. I decided to call her friend later that night, only to find out that Lisa hadn't been with her at all. The following week, I noticed a charge on our credit card statement from a high-end restaurant we had never been to. When I asked Lisa about it, she became defensive, claiming it was a work lunch that she had forgotten to mention. Her explanation seemed plausible, but the way she avoided eye contact made me doubt her words. I couldn't ignore the signs any longer. Lisa's erratic behavior the secretive phone calls, and the unexplained absences all pointed to something more than just stress or a busy schedule. The realization hit me hard. I needed to find out the truth, no matter how painful it might be. The unease gnawed at me, growing stronger with each passing day. The moments of doubt had multiplied, turning into an unbearable weight on my shoulders. Determined to uncover the truth, I took a week off from work, telling Lisa it was for some much-needed rest. She seemed nonchalant, almost relieved, as if my presence was an inconvenience she could do without. My first step was to observe her routine closely. I noted the times she left the house, the duration of her absences, and the phone calls she took in hushed tones. My suspicions grew with each furtive glance she cast my way, each time she hurriedly ended a call as I entered the room. One afternoon, while she was out supposedly running errands, I decided to check her phone. She had become increasingly protective of it, but this time she had left it charging in the kitchen. With a racing heart, I unlocked it and went through her messages. There were no incriminating texts or calls. Lisa had been careful. But then I noticed an app I had never seen before. One of those encrypted messaging apps often used to keep conversations private. My hands shook as I navigated through the app. At first, there was nothing. Just a few mundane conversations. But as I delved deeper, I found a thread of messages from a contact saved as S. The exchange was explicit, leaving no room for doubt about the nature of their relationship. My blood boiled as I read through their plans to meet, the intimate details they shared, and the photos, those damn photos, that confirmed my worst fears. Lisa had been seeing someone else, and it wasn't a fleeting fling. The messages indicated that this had been going on for months, if not longer. 
The final straw was a series of messages planning a rendezvous for that very night at a hotel downtown. They had even discussed what they would do in vivid detail. Rage and betrayal surged through me, but I knew I needed more than just these messages. I needed undeniable proof to confront her. I took screenshots of everything, sending them to my email for safekeeping. Then, with a heavy heart, I made a reservation at the same hotel under a different name, determined to catch them in the act. That evening, Lisa left the house, claiming she was meeting an old friend from college. I nodded, forcing a smile, and wished her a good time. The moment she was out of sight, I grabbed my car keys and followed her, maintaining a safe distance. She drove to the hotel, her car disappearing into the underground parking. I parked nearby and made my way inside, checking in and heading to my room. From there I waited, heart pounding, watching the clock tick agonizingly slow. At precisely 8 p.m., I saw them. Lisa, dressed in an outfit far too provocative for a simple dinner with a friend, walked into the hotel lobby, hand in hand with a man I didn't recognize. They didn't notice me as they made their way to the elevator, laughing and whispering intimately. I followed discreetly, staying out of sight, and waited until they entered their room. My hands clenched into fists as I stood outside, listening to their muffled voices and the occasional laugh. I waited a few minutes, then knocked on the door, my heart thundering in my chest. There was a moment of silence, followed by the sound of footsteps approaching. The door opened slightly, and I pushed it open forcefully, stepping inside. The scene before me confirmed everything. The clothes strewn across the floor, the wine glasses on the bedside table, and the two of them, frozen in shock and guilt. Lisa's face turned pale, and the man, her lover, stared at me, wide-eyed and speechless. I could see the fear and realization dawn in their eyes. This was it, the undeniable proof I needed. My voice was steady, but inside, I was a storm of fury and heartbreak. Enjoying yourselves? I spat, my eyes never leaving Lisa's. She scrambled for words, her face contorting with panic and anger. What are you doing here? She screamed, trying to cover herself with a sheet. You had no right to follow me. No right? I laughed bitterly. I'm your husband, Lisa. I have every right to know what my wife has been up to. And now, I see everything. Her lover tried to intervene, stammering apologies and excuses, but I wasn't interested in his words. My focus was on Lisa, the woman I had loved and trusted now revealed as a liar and a cheat. The betrayal cut deep, but the anger kept me steady. Pack your things, I said coldly. We're done. The drive home was silent and tense. Lisa sat beside me, her face a mask of defiance and guilt. The man she had been with, her lover, had wisely stayed behind, too cowardly to face the fallout of his actions. Lisa had tried to protest, to shout and argue, but I had shut her down each time. There was nothing left to say in that hotel room. As we pulled into the driveway, the reality of the situation seemed to hit Lisa. She looked at our house, the place where we had built our lives together, and tears filled her eyes. But my heart was hardened. The betrayal was too fresh, the wounds too deep. Inside, I went straight to the living room, leaving her to follow. She did, hesitantly, as if stepping into a battlefield. We stood there, facing each other, the weight of our shattered trust hanging heavily in the air. How long? I demanded my voice barely above a whisper, but laced with fury. How long has this been going on? She hesitated, then looked away, her voice trembling. It's not what you think. Don't lie to me, Lisa, I snapped, cutting her off. I read the messages. I saw everything. Just tell me the truth for once. She took a deep breath, her shoulders slumping. Six months, she admitted, her voice breaking. It's been six months. The words hit me like a punch to the gut. Six months of lies, of sneaking around, of pretending everything was normal. Six months of making me look like a fool. Why? I asked, my voice cracking. Why did you do this? She looked at me, tears streaming down her face. I was lonely, John. You were always away, always working. I needed someone, and you weren't there. Her words stung, but they didn't excuse her actions. So instead of talking to me, instead of trying to fix things, you decided to sleep with someone else? I spat, my anger boiling over. You betrayed our marriage, our family. Lisa sobbed, shaking her head. I didn't mean for it to happen, it just did. And then it was too late to stop. Too late to stop? I echoed, my voice rising. You had six months to stop, Lisa. 
Six months to end it, to tell me the truth. But you didn't. You kept lying, kept betraying me. She collapsed onto the couch, her body racked with sobs. But I couldn't find it in me to comfort her. Not this time. Was it worth it? I asked, my voice cold. Was he worth destroying our family? She looked up at me, her eyes pleading. I love you, John. I never stopped loving you. I laughed bitterly. Love? Is this what you call love? Sneaking around, lying, cheating? If that's your definition of love, then I want no part of it. She reached out to me, but I stepped back. The anger and betrayal too overwhelming. Don't, I said sharply. Don't touch me. For a moment we just stood there, the silence filled with the echoes of our shattered trust. Then she spoke again, her voice desperate. Please, John, we can work through this. We can go to counseling, talk to someone. We can fix this. I shook my head, my resolve firm. There's no fixing this, Lisa. You broke us. You broke me. And I don't think I can ever forgive you for that. Her sobs grew louder, but I couldn't let myself be swayed by her tears. I'll sleep in the guest room tonight, I said, my voice void of emotion. Tomorrow we'll talk about the next steps, but for now, I need space. Without another word, I turned and walked away, leaving her to her tears. As I lay in the guest room, staring at the ceiling, the full weight of the betrayal crashed down on me. The woman I had loved and trusted had torn our life apart, and now, there was no going back. The next morning, Lisa was already in the kitchen, her eyes puffy and red from crying. She looked at me as I entered, hope and fear mingling in her gaze, but I had made my decision. I want a divorce, I said bluntly, watching the words hit her like a physical blow. No, John, please, she begged, her voice breaking. We can't just throw everything away. We can fix this. You threw it away, Lisa, I replied coldly. The moment you decided to sleep with someone else, you threw everything away. There's nothing left to fix. She fell to her knees, sobbing, but I couldn't let her tears sway me. The betrayal was too deep, the wounds too raw. I walked past her, grabbing my keys. I'm going out, I said. When I get back, we'll start discussing the divorce, and I want you out of this house by the end of the week. As I left the house, her cries echoed behind me, but I didn't look back. My mind was made up. There was no saving our marriage. The woman I had loved was gone, replaced by a liar and a cheat. And now, I had to figure out how to rebuild my life from the ashes of her betrayal. The days following our confrontation were a blur of legal meetings and emotional turmoil. Lisa had moved out, staying with a friend, and the house felt eerily silent without her. But my anger, my need for justice, burned brighter with each passing day. I couldn't just let her walk away unscathed after everything she had done. My first step was to ensure I had the upper hand in the divorce proceedings. I gathered all the evidence of her infidelity, the messages, the photos, and the details of her affair. My lawyer, a sharp and ruthless woman named Marcia, assured me we had a strong case. You've done well, John, she said, her tone professional but firm. We'll make sure she gets what she deserves. But that wasn't enough for me. I wanted Lisa to feel the same pain, the same humiliation that she had inflicted on me. I wanted her to understand the consequences of her betrayal. And so, I began to plot my revenge. I started by contacting her employer, the law firm where she worked. I scheduled a meeting with the managing partner, presenting the evidence of Lisa's affair, which included explicit messages sent during work hours. The partner's face turned grim as he reviewed the evidence. Thank you for bringing this to our attention, he said. We take matters like this very seriously. We'll be conducting a thorough investigation. Next, I turned my attention to her lover. Through some discreet inquiries, I learned that he was married with two children. Armed with this knowledge, I reached out to his wife, arranging to meet her at a local cafe. As I sat across from her, I could see the worry and confusion in her eyes. Why did you want to meet? She asked, her voice trembling slightly. I'm sorry to have to tell you this, I began, but your husband has been having an affair with my wife. Her face went pale, and she stared at me in disbelief. I handed her a folder containing the evidence. I know this is a lot to take in, but I thought you deserved to know the truth. 
Tears welled up in her eyes as she flipped through the pages, her hands shaking. Thank you, she whispered, her voice choked with emotion. Thank you for telling me. We sat in silence for a few moments, the weight of the revelations hanging heavily between us. Finally, she looked up at me, determination in her eyes. What are you going to do? I'm divorcing my wife, I said, and I intend to make sure her lover faces the consequences of his actions as well. She nodded, her expression resolute. I'll be filing for divorce too. He won't get away with this. Satisfied that my revenge was well underway, I turned my attention back to Lisa. She had been avoiding me, communicating only through her lawyer. But I wanted her to face the full extent of the fallout from her actions. I reached out to mutual friends, making sure they knew exactly why our marriage was ending. The shock and dismay in their reactions told me all I needed to know. Lisa's carefully constructed facade was crumbling. A week later, I got a call from Marcia. John, we've got news. Lisa's employer has terminated her. The affair violated company policy, and the evidence was overwhelming. I felt a grim satisfaction at the news. She had lost her job, her reputation tarnished. But it still wasn't enough. I wanted to confront her one last time, to make sure she understood the full extent of her betrayal. I arranged to meet her at the house, now empty and echoing with memories of better times. As she walked in, she looked tired, worn down by the events of the past few weeks. What do you want, John? She asked, her voice flat and devoid of its usual fire. I want you to understand, I said, my tone cold. I want you to feel the pain you caused me. She looked at me, tears brimming in her eyes. I'm sorry, John. I never meant for it to go this far. Sorry? I laughed bitterly. You're sorry because you got caught. You're sorry because now you're facing the consequences. But you're not sorry for what you did. She hung her head, silent tears streaming down her face. I lost everything, she whispered. My job, my friends, my family. And whose fault is that? I asked sharply. You made your choices, Lisa. Now you have to live with them. She looked up at me, a flicker of anger in her eyes. What do you want from me, John? You've taken everything from me. What more do you want? I want you to understand, I said, my voice low and menacing. I want you to feel the weight of your actions every single day. She stared at me, her expression a mix of defeat and defiance. You got your revenge, John. You ruined my life. Are you happy now? I took a deep breath, the anger slowly ebbing away. No, Lisa, I'm not happy, but I am satisfied. And now, we can finally move on. With that, I turned and walked away, leaving her to the ruins of our past. The revenge had been sweet, but it was also a stark reminder of the cost of betrayal. As I drove away from the house, I felt a strange sense of closure. The chapter with Lisa was over, and now it was time to start writing a new one. The divorce proceedings were set to take place in a few weeks. The preparation was intense, and the atmosphere was thick with tension. Lisa and I had agreed to minimal contact, communicating through our lawyers. The courtroom, where our once private matters would be laid bare, loomed like an ominous specter over our lives. On the day of the trial, I arrived early with Marcia. The courtroom was cold and sterile, a stark contrast to the heated emotions that filled the air. Lisa arrived shortly after, looking weary and defeated. Her lawyer, a man who seemed more interested in his phone than in her case, trailed behind her. We took our seats and the proceedings began. Marcia, with her characteristic sharpness, laid out our case clearly and concisely. The evidence of Lisa's infidelity was irrefutable. The messages, the photos, the details of her affair were all presented systematically. Lisa's lawyer attempted to argue mitigating circumstances, pointing to my absences and the emotional distance that had grown between us, but it was clear that his arguments held little weight against the mountain of evidence. As the judge reviewed the evidence, I couldn't help but glance at Lisa. She sat there, eyes downcast, her hands nervously clutching the edge of the table. The woman I had once loved who had been my partner and confidant, was now a stranger caught in the web of her own deceit. The judge called for a brief recess and we stepped outside. I could feel the weight of the trial pressing down on me, the culmination of months of anger and betrayal. Marcia reassured me that things were going in our favor, but I could see the toll it was taking on her too. This wasn't just a legal battle. 
it was the painful unraveling of a life built together. When the recess ended, we returned to the courtroom. The judge delivered the verdict swiftly. The divorce was granted, and the terms were heavily in my favor. Lisa was to receive minimal alimony, given the circumstances of her infidelity and the loss of her job due to the affair. Our assets were divided with a clear bias towards me, ensuring that I retained the house and the majority of our savings. Lisa's face crumpled as the verdict was read. I could see the devastation in her eyes, the full impact of her actions finally hitting home. She had lost everything, her job, her reputation, her marriage. The satisfaction I had once felt at seeing her suffer was now mingled with a deep sense of finality. This was the end of our story, the last chapter in a book filled with pain and betrayal. As we left the courtroom, Lisa approached me. Her eyes were filled with tears, and her voice was barely a whisper. John, I'm so sorry. I never wanted it to end like this. I looked at her, the woman who had been my wife for so many years, and felt a pang of sadness. I know, Lisa, but it's too late for sorry. We both have to live with the choices we made. She nodded, tears streaming down her face, and walked away. The weight of her actions and the consequences she now faced were a heavy burden she would carry alone. As I watched her leave, I felt a sense of closure. The trial had ended, and with it, the painful chapter of our marriage. With the legal matters settled, I could finally begin to move forward. The road ahead was still uncertain, but I was determined to rebuild my life, to find happiness beyond the shadow of betrayal. The journey would be long and difficult, but for the first time in months, I felt a glimmer of hope. The trial had been a painful but necessary step towards a new beginning. In the months following the trial, I began to slowly piece my life back together. The house, once filled with memories of Lisa and our shared life, was now my own. I took on the task of redecorating, turning it into a space that reflected my new beginning. The walls that once held photos of our family now showcased art that I loved, and the furniture that Lisa had picked out was gradually replaced with pieces that brought me comfort and joy. Work became a sanctuary. Throwing myself into projects, I found solace in the routine and the satisfaction of seeing tangible results. My colleagues, aware of what I had been through, were supportive, giving me the space and understanding I needed. The bonds I formed with them became a vital part of my healing process. One afternoon, while organizing my files, I came across an old photo album. Flipping through the pages, I saw the history of our relationship captured in those images. I felt a mix of nostalgia and sadness, but also a sense of closure. I decided to keep the album, not as a reminder of the pain, but as a testament to the life I had lived and the lessons I had learned. Therapy was another crucial step in my recovery. Dr. Ellis, my therapist, helped me navigate the complex emotions that came with betrayal and divorce. Our sessions were tough, often dredging up painful memories and feelings, but they were also enlightening. I learned to forgive myself for not seeing the signs, to understand that Lisa's actions were not a reflection of my worth, but of her choices. You're doing well, John, Dr. Ellis said during one of our sessions. It's okay to grieve but it's also okay to rebuild. You deserve happiness. His words resonated with me, and I began to see the truth in them. I started reconnecting with old friends and making new ones. Social gatherings, which I had avoided for so long, became enjoyable again. I found myself laughing more, the weight of the past slowly lifting from my shoulders. One evening, at a dinner party hosted by a friend, I met Anna. She was vibrant, with a warm smile and an infectious laugh. We started talking and I found myself drawn to her kindness and genuine interest in my life. As the evening went on, we shared stories and experiences, and I realized how much I had missed connecting with someone on a deeper level. Our friendship grew over the next few months, evolving into something more. Anna was patient and understanding, aware of my past and the scars I carried. She never pushed, allowing me to move at my own pace. With her, I felt a sense of peace and possibility. One crisp autumn morning, we went hiking together, a new hobby I had picked up. As we reached the summit, overlooking the beautiful landscape, I felt a profound sense of gratitude. Life had thrown its worst at me, but I had survived and come out stronger. Thank you for being here with me, I said, turning to Anna. She smiled, her eyes reflecting the warmth I felt in my heart. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else, 
she replied, taking my hand. In that moment, I realized that my journey of healing and self-discovery was far from over, but I was no longer walking it alone. I had found someone who appreciated me for who I was, who supported me, and brought joy back into my life. The lessons I had learned through the pain and betrayal were invaluable. I understood the importance of communication, trust, and mutual respect in a relationship. I knew that my past experiences had shaped me, but they did not define my future. With Anna by my side, I was ready to embrace whatever came next. As the seasons changed, so did I. The memories of the past were still there, but they no longer held power over me. I had built a new life, filled with hope and happiness. And while the scars of betrayal remained, they were now a part of my story. A story of resilience, growth, and the unwavering belief that even after the darkest of times, there could be light. Looking back, I saw the journey I had taken and the strength I had found within myself. The betrayal had been devastating, but it had also been a catalyst for change. It had forced me to confront my fears, to reevaluate my life, and ultimately, to rediscover my worth. As I walked hand in hand with Anna, I knew that the future held endless possibilities. The past was behind me, and ahead was a new chapter, one that I was eager to write. With each step, I felt the weight of the past lift a little more, replaced by the promise of a brighter tomorrow.